JoeHarrison.com. Harrison with you, coming to you live from Marilyn Monroe's former apartment. Well, how much fun do I get to have? How often do I get to sit with a Greek Olympiad? We're talking the, well, let's put it this way, the first one to have won a gold medal for the entire nation of Greece in a hundred years. Did I happen to mention the youngest Olympic gold medalist for gymnastics in the history of all of humankind? Mm -hmm. Sitting here right now in in Marilyn Monroe's former apartment, as you can hear, I'm just dumbstruck in in articulo mortis, is none other than Ioannis Icarus. Say that ten times fast backwards. It's very hard. (laughs) Brilliant man. This is one of the great treats. When you're an Olympiad, an Olympic uh, gold medal winner, it's not because you're lazy and ignorant. It's because you're very high-functioning, like a seriously expensive Swiss watch. All the gears work in rhythm, including your brain. And that's why he's here to share part of his brain with us. Though I personally get to enjoy the aesthetic visual side, you don't. Just trust me, I'm pleased. Uh, a Royal Academy trained actor, by the way, gold Olympic medalist in gymnastics. First one, as I said, in 100 years for Greece. Youngest one in the history of men's gy- gymnastics. And I want to welcome you to Go Harrison. Thank you for having me. And thank you for doing what you've done because you've also spent the last decade helping the humans of Earth, the mammals that crawl about on the globe, us, we the people, uh, in ways that are different from selling shampoo and toothpaste. (laughs) You know, you're actually out there fighting for regular people. And we assume Olympic champions are fighting for Nike, you know. Because that's what we see here in America. Well, I didn't. I know. Great athletes well, fight. Well, by the way, Nike, yes. uh, not to mention that, yes. is a, comes from a Greek word, which means Nike. I mean, the Greek pronunciation is Nike. Uh-huh. Uh, you pronounce it Nike, which means victory. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, virtually every word we use in medicine, uh, words that we use that have complex meanings, much of it comes from Greek. We should ask something. I mean, for like, some rights from, you know, Nike company. You know, now we have the, you know, the crisis in Greece. So we should... <laughs> I think they yes. owe you. Yeah. We, I think they owe you. A well, lot. <laughs> let, let's pivot to that because it's, yeah. it's interesting. We in our American media here, excluding me and, and six point other people, um, you know, we have sort of the official story, which is that the Greeks whatever the official story is, they're, they're all asleep. That's the problem. Or they don't want to go to work. That's why they don't have jobs. They just don't want to go to work. But you're from Greece. It's not true. You want to go to work. Well, I'm a gold Olympic medalist. Yes. That means that um, um, I worked and I'm still working very, very, very hard. And, of course, we can't generalize. I think yeah. that the Mediterraneans, Portuguese, Spanish, Italians, Greeks, uh, we are less lazy, let's put it like this, uh, than the Germans or the Austrians or uh, the Dutch people. Um, it's easy. you know. The press has the power to manipulate uh, people's opinion. And this is definitely... Is the reality is something different, is what we see or what they allow us to see. And the truth is another world. The truth is um, what we can't see or the, what, they, what we must not uh, see. So the Greeks are working very hard. Of course, there are uh, some um, things and some uh, uh, financial uh, forms that we have to reform. Yeah. Uh, we have to make our economy uh, more uh, competitive, um, but we cannot execute uh, sh- um, the middle class uh, people and the working class people uh, because of the numbers or because we have to save uh, the banks. Uh, my message is, you know, people must be above uh, numbers. Yeah. But of course, we have to make some uh, financial reforms to make our economy more uh, competitive. How come you sound better to my ear than Ariana Huffington? <laughs> she's a brilliant uh, um, Greek um, lady. Yes. I mean, she she built it. But in, the way you uh, talk is very nice. The way she talks, it just sounds different. It must be your accent. I'm different. Well, no, you're <laughs> she's different. different. It's, it's, so to, no, yeah. I, I, it's not that. It, it's probably like I think she she learned American English, and I think you learned British English. It has a different sound to it. Um. 
well, yeah. And, and this is audibly <laughs> delivered, what we're doing right now. Yeah. So I think everyone appreciates it. Yes. You sound really good. You sound really good. And, and you're the, the skill that you have with language is extraordinary since it's not your first language. Well, thank you, Kerry. Well, back to our subject. You know, they, I mean, now the Europeans, they have to find... Don't you a, love Europeans? Like, come yeah, on, let's talk yeah. about something serious. Yeah. It, was, it was the princess yeah. in, in from Crete, by the way. Yeah, It's another, you know, I mean, uh, Greek things. Greek thing that, you know, uh, we, uh, we offer for free uh, to Europe. I mean, Europe was a beautiful princess from the beautiful uh, Greek island, Crete, parentheses. I mean, the Europeans, they, they should find uh, a clean agreement um, and based on the European um, uh, values of uh, um, solidarity, uh, trust, and respect of the diversity and the difference. Yeah. That's what the beauty of United States and the power of the economy of United States, mm -hmm. uh, they, because there is a big diversity and we have to respect the, do, the diversity and the difference. And this is what we should have. We can't have, um, we cannot Germanize uh, Europe because at that point, German has a very powerful economy, not to mention, you know, that there was a big haircut back 60 years ago, if I, rem I remember well, 1954, when, where 18 countries, including Greece, you know, we signed uh, this uh, big haircut to Germany. Of course, they're working very hard, but of course, this big haircut back there helped them a lot to build this strong economy. So we cannot Germanize the economy or in general Europe because then Europe is not the Europe that we know and we love. So we have to trust each other. Um, we have to have this uh, value of the solidarity, but we must keep this beautiful difference and diversity that we have. And we will. I mean, four years ago, everybody was loving each other. And then suddenly, you know, we, there's the North European countries and the South European countries that the press, you know, promote that there is a big battle. But it, it's not. I mean, I have friends. I was born in Germany, by the way. Hold that thought. I'm yes. just going to jump in yes. for a second. Yeah. Just remind you, you are listening to The Smart Show, part of GoHarrison.com, part, podcast of this and everything else, always available on GoHarrison.com. You can follow us on Twitter at GoHarrison, at GoHarrison. Same thing, Instagram, GoHarrison. You can also find us on Facebook. Follow us, keyword my Harrison or Carrie Harrison or whatever Mr. Zuckerberg decides tomorrow are the new rules <laughs> on Facebook for you and me. We're talking to Giannis Icarus. He is a Royal Academy trained actor. That's London Royal Academy, by the way. Um, also gold medal, Olympic medalist, gymnastics, first one in a hundred years, an entire century for Greece, youngest one in the history of men's gym gymnastics. Uh, the two exercises on the apparatus of vault are named after him by the International Gymnastics Federation because he was the first one. Did I happen to mention he was the first one who ever performed them? Oh, my God. Yep, it's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> and as Howard Dean would say, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're, uh, we're talking to him because not only is he a tremendous athlete, uh, uh, unsurpassed by many, still yet today, um, but he also has extended himself in so many ways for so many people whom he will never meet. He stands up for millions of people who don't have a voice. So he's come in today to help us explain as gringo Americanos, which is not Greek, but part of something might be. Uh, certainly my behavior is when nobody's looking. I will admit that fully and freely. Um, but he's in here today to actually help us understand what's going on a little bit in Europe, plus talk about what he's going to be doing in Los Angeles coming up in a month or two. But we have this story about the Germans who claim that they're hardworking and industrious. We know their cars are terrific. Mm -hmm. We all agree their cars are are terrific. Yeah, well, we can't forget also yes. what happened 70 years ago yes. as well. Huh? Yes, yeah. and, and so... We have to move forward, what, but we have to for yes. not forget the past. We, we, yeah. have, we have listeners who are going to be maybe, you know, 15, 20 years old, and they don't really understand World War II. They understand basically, in this country, I'm not saying in Europe, yeah. in this country, um, we barely teach anything that happened in Europe because now it's considered unpatriotic. Or it's a bit far. No, it's considered unpatriotic. Oh, really? No, because there's only one country on earth, the United States, <laughs> and the only real government in the world, the United States, and the rest of you are communists, or about to be. And well, so you have to be disciplined. 
you, you you're leading guys i um, mean the world in, in in many different fields yeah uh in you know universities uh, education not public well education, exactly but great universities. exactly so get on your knees <laughs> and pray to us now that said you were born in germany yes. the germans in world war ii were very impolite to the Greeks, which is the loveliest code I can possibly come <laughs> up with. But they, they went into Athens, which is, and, and other parts of Greek where the, the source of human aesthetic and art, the original pillars and columns, the, the, the designs that we use today, even on our White House and our Capitol building, inspired by the Greeks, the, the gods, mm -hmm. the goddesses, all of this stuff. And the Germans said, well, those are ours, actually. Well, yes. Somehow the Greeks <laughs> took them 2,000 years ago <laughs> from early Germans and put them in Greece. We're going to just bring them back to Berlin where they belong. <laughs> and there's like miniature Greece there. Like the Parthenon marbles that Lord <laughs> yeah, Elgin right? did, you know, back I mean, 200 years ago. But by the way, we have to thank George Clooney, your American actor that uh, officially uh, supports the reunification of the Parthenon marbles back to Greece. And it will happen once. I'm sure I'm, I'm also fighting for that. Yes. And thank you for that. You know, we can, through your... Um, um, show a uh, radio show. This show will ha make, make it happen. Yeah. This show single handedly <laughs> will restore those within two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Mark, to write it down, it'll happen. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's cool is you guys are the birthplace of democracy. The thing that we hold as our most vaunted, highest value in the United States democracy. And you guys had a real one. Like, actually, everybody voted. Unlike here, it's like... Not always. Well, not always. <laughs> yes. But, but you know, we have kind of a... Yeah. Well, we have a, a, a Republican democracy, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, but one of the things you guys, still to this day, Angela Merkel, who is the, the uh, chancellor of Germany, who dresses in those Hillary Clinton-esque type, <laughs> I don't know, thick, thick <laughs> wool with the fat buttons... And, and her thick ankles. Like, I want to see her and Hillary nude, <laughs> sumo wrestling. I could see the future of the two powerful nations. And then I don't know what China... They're open-minded uh, women, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What would China offer to that? I'm not sure. Maybe the hotel. But, yeah. but Angela Merkel is driving through Greece, which you're part of the European Union. So it makes sense that the, prime, the uh, chancellor of Germany is going to go to Greece and have din-din with your, your prime minister and make nice and smoke a cigar and take a <laughs> swim. And as she's driving through, in your democracy, and remember, you taught us about the notion of if you don't agree with it, you stand up and talk. You, you must. Demonstrate. I mean, this is one of the most important values that we have in Europe. I mean, demonstration. You have to stand up and say no when you believe that it's no. When in, I mean, uh, je suis sarli. I mean, you, yes. you know, that's what Europe and America, um, uh, we have to have. I mean, freedom of speech. Even if I'm just the only one, I have the right to stand up and demonstrate against even the prime minister or against even Angela Merkel. Uh, I have to give credits to her because she um, is responsible right now for... For all this crisis, I mean, responsible. In, I mean, she has to find solutions. Yes, she does. Yeah, and so uh, she's the only woman. That's an extra credit that I have to give to her, among with all other, you know, yeah. uh, old-fashioned thinkers and men. Sure. Um, so I have to give a lot of credits. Of course, some measures that you know she has to take or whatever she she wants to take because for her benefit or for her party's benefit or for her country benefits are against, you know, the Mediterranean countries sometimes. Uh, but still, I have to give credits to her because she, she's a really European um, leader and I do believe in her. And I do believe that at the very last moment, our Prime Minister and uh, Angela Merkel and the rest of the uh, European uh, Union uh, Prime Ministers will find a solution uh, for the crisis that we have now in Greece. N not only in Greece, I mean in, in, in Europe in general. My, my only point, my, the point that I have to, um, um, stress. to, to stress and mark is that uh, you can see now in our days uh, the ghost of the fascism and the monster, fascism. the fascism, sorry, and yeah. the, the monster of the neo Nazis yes. uh, that is rising up dramatically in the entire Europe, I mean, in Greece, the birthplace of democracy, the third largest party in the Greek parliament is the Golden Doe, a, a neo-Nazi party. 
in, in France, vivra liberation, hein? Right. In, in, in France, unthinkable. I mean, first part of the European elections, uh, like it was about, I think, six months ago, uh -huh. from five months ago, Marie Le Pen, she was first. I mean, the extreme right party of France. In Austria, one, almost one in three Austrians voted or, or opted for the extreme right parties. And so, gave Germany Adolf Hitler. Yep. Yeah, and then, you know, all, all those things, they are against, you know, whatever, gay, the gay people. Right. They are against, uh, uh, I mean, they support full Christianity and religious. Yeah. I mean, it's the crisis by itself, a financial crisis, but can cause a lot of other problems that we, we are facing now. And then we have to find a right away solution. Because otherwise, I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised that I'm, I'm very proud that I'm Greek, but having a neo-Nazi party in the Greek parliament, it, it, for me, was unthinkable. And now it's the third largest uh, party in, in, in Greece. And Le Pen in France, Woo, number one. And yeah. we have the Tea Party in the United States. <laughs> but it's real. It's, they're not kidding. They're not joking around as they cut off, try to cut off the life support, the food, water, and shelter to the American people who've paid for it over and over again in their taxes. The Tea Party wants to simply make it go away so that everybody becomes beholden to whoever has the power. And you're willing to work for next to nothing just to eat, just to have medicine in this country. In this country. It mirrors itself in different ways across the world, certainly, but it's the same technique. We just use in our various nations the language that we all understand, even the metaphoric language, mm -hmm. something that you Greeks invented, metaphor. In yeah. fact, you invented everything. Well, pretty not, much. not everything, but, you know, we, we, I think we did and we still do. Well, let's, uh, yeah. what a We're a small country. We, I mean, the Greeks in Greece, we're just 12 million, million people. And in the entire Greeks outside of Greece, we are 20. Maybe this, I mean, the entire California is... 38 million. Yeah, you see? Yeah. Well, see, we like to breed. Yes. This is the difference. You could pave all of Greece and build condos and put a Starbucks <laughs> and McDonald's in every corner and have maybe 100 million people there. How come you didn't breed the way we have? What is that? Well... <laughs> The, well, do I love know? asking Europeans. They're like, well, I, you know, we. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. But you guys, I mean, here in this country, I have to admit that um, it's besides the competitive economy and, okay, the aggressiveness of the capitalism, there are, I mean, two different, a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Um, but you give uh, a lot of opportunities to young people. You can see even in a CEO position or you can be a professor at the university, um, Stanford University, Berkeley University, a guy that is 27 years old. It's, it's impossible to see that in Europe if you don't have a gray hair. Yeah. Because if you have a gray hair, then, then you're a mature and then you're a serious person. Um, if you, 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 you have a tie. So... It's it's we can't unfortunately in, in Europe we in some issues and fields we are old fashioned thinkers and we 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 don't speed up with the way that you do and um, I have to give compliments to to United States for the, that they give opportunities to young people to make a career and that's why this country it's uh, it's so um, powerful. Uh, because uh, it's a mosaic of, of cultures yes. and they can accept people from all over the world. And we of love course, to when invent. you have a superpower, then you can have well, this, you know, uh, arrogance of multi, <laughs> once in a multi -tipped while. Multi-tipped thermonuclear warheads. <laughs> well, yeah. Don't get in the way. Well, yeah, yeah, Mr. Bush or whatever, whoever. Yeah, yeah. So when you have this power, you can, you have to use it in the right direction. And, you do often you do it in the right direction, but sometimes I mean in Iraq or in Afghanistan, I mean I don't know, I'm not politician, but as um, a political active person, I I don't like to see war. I don't like people suffer. Uh, they should find they should use all these diplomatic tools to find solutions. Um, well, yeah, wherever they can apply the solutions. Yeah, Saddam Hussein never should have gotten in a rowboat and crossed the Atlantic and blown up the World Trade Center. <laughs> Had he not done that, it never would have happened. And my sarcasm, it, it's because 70% of Americans think that's what happened. Because we're told that. Not by Bush, it was implied. But Fox News and other things. I mean, it really is. Ex but that's not why we're here today. Yeah, Even though right. bashing yes. Fox yes. would be good, clean fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but his brother might run for the new there. president of the United States. I'm sh- anything a dynasty named, back hey, again. <laughs> why not have a president named Jeb? I think it's time. <laughs> yeah. Harrison with you. This is the Smart Show, part of GoHarrison.com. We're talking to Jonas Icarus, Royal Academy trained actor, gold Olympic medalist in gymnastics. First one, by the way, in 100 years for Greece to win. A century it took for him to appear also as the youngest one in the history of men's gymnastics. It turns out that a couple of exercises on the apparatus of vaulting, vaulting are named after him by the International Gymnastics Federation, because he was the first one ever to perform them. And in a couple of minutes, we're going to talk about what he's going to be doing in Los Angeles as an ambassador, ambassador to the Special Olympics. Uh, He also is the runner of the torch, the famous torch when you see the Olympics. Guess who's running with it? Him, the man sitting here right now. But I want to talk for just a moment, because earlier today, I was on uh, KPCC, another public radio station here in L.A., talking about gay history <coughs> because the, <coughs> coughing is a great thing to do on the radio by the way i encourage it it sounds so good to the listener particularly i told you stop smoking but that yes yeah, start, yeah. or maybe i'll just take it up <laughs> um and because it's pride month coming up uh, here across the united states and the world by the way gay pride month we look back to the greeks who had a very fluid sexual expression It wasn't perversion by any sense. You look at the greatest philosophers and thinkers of all time, and they did what worked. And who knows what? Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's the neighbor. Maybe whatever it is. And they didn't have the prohibitions until religion, a long time later, came around. And, you know, you set up an empire, the Holy Roman Empire, and the most massive real estate adventure ever known in history. Where you look around the world right now, in every city, every corner, there's, say, a Catholic church made out of stone filled with gold and statues and diamonds. And Jesus, it's beautiful, right? Imagine the value of that real estate alone, not to mention <laughs> the building, the ornate, the stained glass, all, everything within it. So, so you've, you've really, you've taken an empire and, and planted real estate all over the world. Then you get people who are at the self-serve pump who say, I'm getting a hard on today looking at that picture. No, that is forbidden Hmm. because individual thought is going to pull away from you running an empire, which is everyone turn left in three, two, one, go. And then Timmy over there turns right because he's smelling a different flower. So you have to make that flower illegal. You have to make these kinds of things. But the Greeks didn't think that way. I mean, really, they didn't. Well, <laughs> then. Uh, well, even back to th- two thousand years ago, I mean, th- in many many um, issues, they were very uh, open-minded. Uh, not to mention, you know, the poetry, philosophy, art, and uh, I mean, in in sports, in uh, the Olympics, it was the strength, but also you know the beauty of the the body, and not to mention the uh, the beautiful naked sculptures. Um, mostly from the Olympian Greek uh, male athletes because it was only for men back there. Yeah. Um, they were allowed to, you know, to compete. Uh, but also even Aphrodite, our goddess of, uh, of beauty. I yes. mean, she, 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 there are great sculptures. One of the greatest one in Louvre Museum in, in Paris. Oh, so it yeah. voluntarily left Greece <laughs> yes. yeah. to go put itself in Paris. Right. Along uh, with your yes. other artifacts. Yeah. Well, thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> She was um, she, she's uh, sh- shirtless. <gasps> oh my god! And if I remember, um, I can't remember, but it was about three, four years ago. One of the courts in New York, uh, they had this beautiful goddess of uh, you know justice, and she was, uh, I think, um, yes, half draped. Shirt, uh, yes, and then you know the, one of the judges or uh, whatever, our, this, our attorney general yes. John Ashcroft, the one who gave us, by the way, the Patriot Act and allows the NSA to spy on everything, he threw a tarp over her because (laughs) you might imagine a nipple. And if you imagine a nipple, well, the next thing you know, something could get hard. (laughs) And the problem is somebody like Ashcroft wasn't able to achieve an erection. (laughs) And so having this constant sort of soft noodle type thing in his pants... Very embarrassing. Well, the, do you know, uh, Carrie, the religious, any kind of religious, uh, Christianity, whatever, evangelists, uh, Muslims, um, 
I mean, any kind of religious kills the freedom of expression and the freedom、uh, of speech. Whatever is that? I mean,、uh, as an artist, you can paint something that they they don't like it. And、um, I think recently something happened to,、uh, in Greece, and you know the the Christians. I mean, the community the, are is very strong in Greece,、um, and they just stood up and they say, no, you can't have this painting there. It's unthinkable. We are in the twenty first century, and The, the, the artist or the、um, the people in general they have to express themselves with, with the way that they want,、uh, as long they respect、uh, the others、uh, people. So we, we we are free people, and it must be like that. So religious, unfortunately, most of, no all always kills、uh, free, the freedom of speech and the freedom of、uh, um, the, the expression. Either is uh,、um, uh, if you you're a homosexual, if you're a lesbian,、uh, if you're a crazy artist and you you you, you do something that you, they might not like it. Of course, we they sh- we should have some you know limits, but at the same time, you know, freedom of speech is it's it must be. Freedom, a hundred percent freedom. So for me, it's unthinkable that still in our days,、uh, even in Europe or even in the United States, I mean, not Los Angeles or Boston or I mean New York or San Francisco,、um, some other states they are very, you know, they have stricted rules about you no know, expression, expressing your um, um, your love, your passion, your your creativity. Look in Russia. I mean, it, it's it's it's、uh, from my point of view, it's unthinkable. It's really unthinkable. So, and why? My question is, why you fear something like that? Why? Because it's such a powerful thing, and powerful thing is freedom. And why you fear that? I mean, if you really be strong in your, you know,、um, beliefs, and this is your choice, you don't have to fear something that it's different. You fear something that is different when it's not, of course, stronger, but it's different. But when you really believe to your choice, you don't have to fear something that it's different. Accept it, embrace it. That's now you're that I'm, really I'm upsetting th- yeah, people of power. Yeah, <laughs> you're inviting people to so think. So if you're not with me, <laughs> you're my enemy. You're against it. <laughs>、yes. Yeah, Harrison, with you, we are talking to Ionis、uh, Icarus, or Icarus Ionis. And he is a, an Olympic gold. And I'm just so relaxed. You can hear my feet are up. That's the beauty of this. He is a Royal Academy of London trained actor, gold Olympic medalist in gymnastics. Was the first one in a century to win the gold medal for Greece. We did that, and we beat it, China and Russia. You know the two, you know, strongest and most powerful, you know, gymnastics academies.、Uh, and that, I mean, I have to thank my parents. My coach, Mr. Kapnidis, my ballet teacher,、uh, Chrisalitu, and of course my physical therapist. It was not, you know, I was, I, I was the one that I perform and execute the performance on the podium. But it was a team work, and I have to thank from the bottom of my heart, you know, those people, my parents, my coach, my,、uh, my ballet teacher, my physical ther- therapist, and the people that they believe on that、uh, dream、it、was. It was、uh, a goal and a dream at the same time, and we did it. Now, apart from running the torch, which you do at the Olympics, you're also going to be in Los Angeles here in Hollywood, comma California,、mm-hmm. um, coming up in July.、Um, you're doing a play, Sisyphus, the famous one we know, where we push the boulder up the hill, only to have it roll down, only to push it back up for the rest of eternity. Yes, but that's. What it feels like for a lot of people who go to work every day.、Yes. Like, ah, shit! Got to <laughs> roll that boulder up the hill. Oh, here it comes back down, <laughs> and then they put a gun to the back. If you want your paycheck, you'll push it back up the hill again. <laughs> and and it's it's amazing how the ancient Greeks created, you know, make believe scenarios for virtually everything that today is relevant. You know, you lie too much, bad things happen. You do this too much, your ego is too huge, bad things happen. Like there's nothing today that we invent that didn't exist thousands of years ago when your ancient Greeks, your great 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 great, great, great <laughs> can't even go back、Fun. that far. Yeah, when they got together and said, "Hmm, let's think about this." Well, the,、uh, well, yeah, they had plenty of time, I guess, you know, to think. Great weather, of course. No iPhones. Under these beautiful, you know, plateau and trees. Yeah, no iPhones, no telephones. Yeah. yeah.、Um, so they and it's an amazing when we had this conversation、uh, um, a few weeks, a few weeks ago, when you know Socrates. I mean, his 
a, a student was Plato, and then pl- I mean Plato's student was Aristoteles, and then and Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great, a homosexual. I mean, what a you know a pyramid. That, yes, yeah. right. Well, I mean, a great leader. I mean, wh- whoever wants to do. In, in in his personal life, either he was bi- bisexual or homosexual. Yeah, if you buy him something, he would have sex with no, you. No, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's it's you know, he was a great uh, leader. I mean, why in our days we have to care about you know who who is doing what? And I mean, I do care if you're uh, a great personality, yeah. a, uh, you have a good heart, yeah. and whatever you do in your personal life, it's your business. It's not my business. And what if it's Dick Cheney? <laughs> And you want to close your eyes. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> well, yes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> There's a line yeah. for everyone whatever. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, no, but we did in London, yes. Sisyphus. Yes. It was uh, during the Cultural Olympics. It was the day mm-hmm. after the opening ceremony in London. Um, we did very well. And uh, now we are uh, willing to um, perform the same uh, uh, piece in uh, uh, 28th and 29th of July at the Theatre 40 in Beverly Hills and uh, I would like to um, dedicate and donate the first uh, performance for uh, the Special Olympian athletes uh, um, from Greece and also from the United States and with this way as an ambassador of the Special Olympics I want to bridge uh, culturally and athletically uh, the two countries United States and uh, Greece and it's my time in, in, in with my um, athletic or cultural way to pay back uh, to the Americans uh, to the Americans because back in 1996 in, in Georgia Dome, the spectators, the American spectators, were, I mean, unforgettable. They stood up, they're cheering, they're clubbing. Yeah. I mean, when I won during my performance, and also just I still remember before my last path uh, when I was doing an arabesque. Uh, they were, I mean, cheering and uh, embracing me and not only, you know, welcome me, but also supporting me psychologically during my, my performance. So uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. And the American audience really appreciate uh, the Olympian athletes and um, the sports in general. So it's my time now with my way as an ambassador of the Special Olympics to bridge these two countries culturally with Sisyphus and athletically um, awakening the awareness of, uh, of, of the people here in California, but in the entire United States, to come and see the Special Olympics. Because I do concern myself an, an ordinary athlete, but those athletes are extraordinary. And they need our support. They need our love. We must be there. We will be there. The opening ceremony, you know, they can find, they can uh, buy the tickets online, but the rest of the competition is for free. So everybody can come to see and support and uh, embrace those beautiful athletes, extraordinary athletes, and there is no excuse to not go. It's for free, so once that they, they, and it will be for eight days, uh, seven days. Uh So. We, we are waiting, you guys. There, we we we, it, we we must support these beautiful athletes because they whatever they do, they do it for purity. You know, Olympics is a great um, uh, leveler. Uh, yes, but still, you know, um, they are big sponsors. Um, you know, the athletes we do for you know our country. We have this idea of you know winning the competitions. Uh, we love what we do, but still, you know, when you grew up. When you grow up, then always, you know, the, you think also, you know, the sponsors and this and that. Not in gymnastics because you start very early. So there is still purity um, and you do it w- what you do for love. But uh, in other sports, when you are 25, when you are 30 years old and you have big sponsors, you know, then you, you do it for your country, but also you do it for your benefit, I guess. Uh, but those special Olympian athletes, whatever they do, they do it. Not even for their country. They do it for the love of the sports, for the love of the Olympic values, for the love of the Olympic spirit. And then, and then for their countries, I guess. But their strongest motivation is the, the love of the Olympic spirit. So I'll be, I'm, I'm honored that I'm going to run uh, with the torch. And thank you. Uh, I want to thank the, um, the American uh, Olymp- Special Olympic Committee that they, the, they offer me to run I mean, t- with the torch. And I don't know which leg I'm going to do it, but I know it's going to be here in uh, Los Angeles. So uh, having the same honor back in 2004 at the opening ceremony in Greece, running with a torch in my country. Um, and last year at the Sochi, uh, during the Sochi Olympics, I uh, lighting the torch at the Acropolis. So now I will do that outside of Greece for yeah. the first time yeah, yeah, in my yeah, life. Yeah. And I'm very, very uh, exciting about that, excited about that. So 
Thank you, uh, American Special Olympic Committee, for, for this invitation. We're talking right now to uh, Ionis Icarus. He is a gold medal Olympic medalist in the gymnastics. First one in 100 years for Greece. Youngest one, history of men, g- men's gymnastics. Uh, and two of the exercises, a um, vaulting exercise, are named after him by the International Gymnastics Federation because he was the first one who ever performed them successfully. Uh, he also has been chosen by Giorgio Armani, among with David Beckham and uh, Serena, Michael Jordan, Carl Lewis, for a limited edition photography book, which is going to be dedicated to the Special Olympics. And do we know, by the way... Sexy you, photos. It was Sexy yeah, photos? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah very... Have, La- you, have you shot them white. yet? Well, yeah, we did it. Yeah, me, I, I was in a you know Acropolis. Yes, and you know we did. I think all of them, it, yeah, black and white, uh, sexy photos. Sexy photos for yeah. the Special Olympics. I like it. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? That's what I say. Yeah. Now, what is the, in your estimation, um, the original Olympics and, and the, the the aesthetic that Europeans have? You love architecture. You love the art, the statuary. You know, the buildings all seem to fit each other, even though it might have, this building is different from the one next to it, but they all kind of work with each other. It doesn't stick out. And I have to say, and I can say this because I'm American, it's very unesthetic here. You get a 7-Eleven next to a junked school bus, next to a big house, next to, it's like, what is all of this? It doesn't have the, but you guys in Europe have this kind of flow thing going on. Um, and maybe we're just new, and it's just great to put a gas station there because you can make money. <laughs> it may be that simple. Maybe it d- doesn't work that way. Maybe you just can't put a shell station in the middle of the town square. But I have to say that, you know, the skyscrapers and all this, you know, minimalistic wave of mm-hmm. architecture mm-hmm. that you invented, guys, mm-hmm. basically, uh, it's something that it's very um, powerful in, uh, for us mm-hmm. from Europe because mm-hmm. we are – you know, more into classic. Yeah. And of course, I mean, they're great, you know, more contemporary uh, uh, architects yeah. uh, from all over the world in yeah. Spain, Italy, Greece, Germans, they do great jobs, yeah. uh, Austrians. Uh, but they're this powerful, minimalistic uh, um, wave here in the United States. I mean, in New York, I mean, downtown here in Los Angeles. So, you know, I like you too. <laughs> I like you too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But coming from Greece and as an Olympian athlete, for me, it's 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 very powerful and it's very um, touchy and emotionally powerful. I mean, about nine days ago, the American delegation of the uh, we uh, for the Special Olympics uh, came to Greece to receive the uh, Olympic flame, and now the Olympic flame uh, that came from ancient Olympia, you know, with a with a torch relay to Athens, now is in the United States. And for the next 100 days, you're going to have here the torch relay in 50 different uh, states. Wow. So it's very powerful, the message of the Olympic spirit and the Olympic value. So basically, you pass the torch and you pass the knowledge and you pass these Olympic values to the next one and then to the next one. And it's a... And, and it's a you, you, you unite this uh, uh, spirit and you are coming from Greece, you are coming from Italy, from Germany, from the United States, doesn't matter. It's, 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 this is the power of the Olympic spirit and what you know, the Greeks uh, donate for free yeah. and we give for free yeah. all these uh, values of philosophy, poetry, Olympics. Um, well, I have to think about that. I mean, especially, you know, a proposal to the International Olympic Committee that every four years they make billions of euros um, organizing, you know, the Olympics. Sure. Um, I mean, the, the country or, the, I mean, the city that organized the Olympics, they spent a lot of money, but also they make a lot of money. Uh, and also the International Olympic Committee, and not to mention that few of them, thank God, they're corrupted, you know, a couple of scandals in the International Olympic Well, Committee, only lately. You know, uh, uh, but uh, maybe uh, as a new proposal, 1% of their um, incomes that, you know, from all these big sponsors, sure. I'm not asking for 10% or 15% if I was an agent of my country. Just 1%. But I'm very generous. Yes, you uh, are. Just 1% of all those money. Of a billion dollars. Yeah, because Greeks and Greece invented the Olympics. Yes, this, they did. Yeah. So I think we, we, we have to negotiate it. You that. should license yeah. it. 
Yeah. I mean, it's nice that we, you know, we open the opening ceremony. The Green Greece is yes. the, always the first delegation that parades, yeah. either the Special Olympics or the Olympics or Paralympics. Yeah. And yeah, it's well, yeah, thank you for that. But in terms of money, because, you know, <laughs> the reality is one thing, but sure. the truth is another, as yes, I yes, said. Yes. I think they sh- we have to neg- renegotiate, you know, that. And if they will say no, then if I was minister of... <laughs> I suppose I will say, okay, light the flame with your lighter. So we will not give you the Olympic flame from ancient Olympia. So take a lighter, you know, during your cig- when you you know smoking a cigarette, and make your own Olympics. Hmm? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and even the word Olympics, you should license. <laughs> even that. Well, it's like Oscars. You can say it verbally, but if you write it down, you have to put a trademark and pay a license if you're going to make money off it. Yes. You know? Yes, yes. So I think if it's the Olympics, ding! We did Registered for, trademark. Yeah, we did everything. Olympics. Yeah, they did everything for free. No, in our days, nothing is for free. No, that's so it's right. Time, yeah. We're just following your lead. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you people are on to something. Yes, yes. So I'm very, very excited that, you know, now in, in two months from now, we will, I'll be here and yeah. um, supporting the gymnastics and, uh, and Nadia Comaneci will be here. Bart Connor will be here. International dignitaries will yeah. be, come here to yeah. your city. Um, it's a big event. Like back in 1984 was the Olympics and now 35 uh, years or 30, um, 84, 94, 2004. English major. I yeah. can't help you there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So now it's another big event uh, that uh, this city will organize. So you guys, uh, you, it's, it's, we, we need you there. They need you, this beautiful Special Olympian athletes. And I'm looking forward also to perform uh, Sisyphus. Now, how do we yeah. follow you? Because I know you guys are, you're, because it's, it's a non-profit and you're raising money for it. How do, how do we follow you and help you with that? I mean, um, for Sisyphus? Or yeah, for Sisyphus. For, for Sisyphus. I mean, my, my Facebook page is, uh, it's, it's Greek to you. So it's it's I- all Greek <laughs> yes, to me. It's Ionis Melissa Nidis slash uh, official. We can spell that. Let's spell it. <laughs> well, it's I O A. Double N I S uh-huh. and then M E L I double S A N I D from David uh-huh. I from iPhone as from South America. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> it's Greek to you, I know. Well, we'll yeah. we'll have a link on goharrison dot com when with this podcast or when it is a podcast, so you can just clink up, clink. That's Hogan's Heroes. Well, Sisyphus is a very yeah. powerful uh, symbol and metaphor of this internal effort that every human uh, being does facing his uh, destiny or facing these, uh, the dilemma of this Shakespearean question to be part of the game or not to be part of the game. So if you're part of the game, you accept your destiny. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to be part of the game, then uh, you have to face another reality of and you have to be punished from Zeus you get or from the IMF. Yes, that's right. Either I was going to say yes. austerity time. Yes, <laughs> or whatever, because you just you know stand up and with dignity and say enough is enough. I, I, I'm going to rule my life. I'm leading my life. But if you will stand up, then IMF or Zeus or um, Jesus Christ or, or Goldman Sachs Mammoth, or whatever Goldman yes. Sachs yes yeah Bank of America yeah, <laughs> yeah. W- uh, may look at you with disfavor yeah but I mean I'm open if they would like to you know contribute something for the performance over the special I hope Olympics. they're listening I hope yes. they do <laughs> yeah. we love you guys we as long as you help us <laughs> Bank of America on every corner keeping your community safe <laughs> So yes, this is is very very powerful and um, symbol and uh, a metaphor, and uh, the challenge for the artist and the actor that has to uh, perform on stage is that he has to deliver uh, this story of forty minutes without using his tools of the words. So you have to deliver the story without any single word, not as a dancer, not as a mimic, but as uh, an actor. And you have to use some of your physical. So it's a skills. silent play. Yes, it's it's very powerful. It's very challenging and powerful. Wow. Yes, and inspired from by the, you know the dark world of uh, Samuel Beckett. Yes. Yeah. Wow, so, I remember reading Beckett on a bus. Re- reading, uh, oh Jesus, that was hard work. 
because it's not easy stuff. I no, mean, it I was mean, deep. Well, Beckett is very dark yes, and very yes, powerful. Yeah. Um, where our performance is Sisyphus, uh -huh. and we inspired from the yeah. world of Samuel Beckett. It's, another, it's not the Beckett piece, yeah, just to make sure that we, yeah, we don't be in trouble <laughs> with, you know. Things. So as we yeah. finish up our conversation yeah. with uh, Ionis Icarus, Royal Academy trained actor, gold Olympic medalist in gymnastic, first one in 100 years for Greece to win that gold medal, youngest one in the history of gymnastics, who is going to be starring in the play Sisyphus. Um, the ancient Greeks believed in multiple gods, and then somewhere along the line, they stopped believing. So you have choices. <laughs> Lots of choices, <laughs> yeah. right? Lots of choices and gender bending and all kinds of fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, Even God of Fertility, I know. Dionysus is the God of Theater eh? and the God of Fertility. It was not the untouchable gods of purity and seriousness and, you know, whatever. You know, we yeah. have gods there that have this... That had range of motion. Yes. I mean, Zeus. Right. Oh, my God. Why? Right. He was unstoppable. <laughs> he really was. <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we look at the origins of what many of us in our own religions would be raised in that you know, Deus comes from Zeus or Zeus. They all come from you guys, really, or Mesopotamia or somewhere in there, wherever you conquered. Mm -hmm. um, it's all the same kind of stuff, but it all comes from there. They just um, maybe minimalize the amount of gods so that we can handle one or two, <laughs> you know, give them a son and give them a right hand. Yeah. That's it. It stops there. But, but it all comes from kind of the one origin that you guys had to explain the weather. You had to explain romance. You had to explain all these things. So you Nature. came up with these external powers that governed everything that was going on around you. Well, and the Greek gods, the beauty about that it was they, we hum, 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 humanize. You, yes. you, we humanize the, our gods uh, with the good things. And I, I'm not going to say the I mean, bad things, of course. I mean, they were fighting each other. I mean, during the Troy War, six mm. gods were you know, supporting Greeks and six other gods were supporting you know, Troy. And, you know, and also all these, you know, backstage stories, especially they were very sexual active. Our Greek gods, and I'm, I'm very proud of that, and we are very proud of that, of course. Yeah, uh, my my god, Church of England. No Artemis, of course. <laughs> yeah, not so sexual. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Aphrodite, Dionysus, yeah. Zeus. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, and Ganymede. Uh, well, there's a little bit of everything there. Oh huh? yes, I mean he he was unstoppable. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> so the, the famous Greek statue of Zeus, probably one of the most famous. Zeus holding Ganymede under his arm. Oh no, it's not the most popular. No, I mean one of the most popular, I think, is the one that is in in Athens in the Archaeological Museum. And well, is it do? Should we move that to Germany where it belongs? <laughs> Come and get it. <laughs> this is Sparta. <laughs> Come and get it. <laughs> well, I love Germans. I was born in Germany. Yes. Yeah, and I have great friends. I mean, athletes. We always doing these training camps in Berlin, in Athens, in Thessaloniki. So we love each other and we support each other. But it's great to make some, you know, satiric uh, jokes, you know, between us. I mean, sure. that's the beauty of, sure. you know, we have to keep this, you know, nice, you know, it's, it's why not? This is life. Sparring yeah. partners. Yes, why not? Yeah. But, you know, uh, to be serious, we really, you know, love each other and the Germans love Greeks and Greeks will do love uh, Germans. I mean, of course, always there, is, there are issues and good that we have different yeah. issues. I mean, look, California, New York, always there is a battle. You guys here in California, you you're concerned to be lazy. You yes, know, yes, surfers. We're the we're the we're yeah. the uh, where the New Yorkers are the you know the the strong. We're the Portuguese. <laughs> yes, yeah, and, and they're the, the Germans. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, and the, yeah, but you know, but you enjoy life. Yes, you, we do. Yeah, you enjoy the weather. You yes, have a, we do. Yes, I mean, and the water, and the palm trees, and the skiing. And we comes in life once. I don't know. You know, this is at least what I know. I mean, what the scientists tell us, and we. I mean, I've, I've never seen with my eyes somebody resurrected. So <laughs> at least I know that I'm um, uh, here, uh, I'm alive. Yes. Um, so we have to enjoy um, uh, the, the creativity of our work yes. and business. I, it, it's, un, un, it's everything acceptable and understandable. But we have to enjoy life. We can't be slaves in our lives. We, and we can't be slaves of other people that, you know, they make more money 
And we need money. I mean, I don't want to be. I mean, we need people that offer jobs. We need, I mean, ship owners, Greek ship owners that they have to bring their money, not in Liechtenstein. I mean, you know, no, Switzerland, all the money is the biggest money are in Liechtenstein, in, um, in, in Switzerland. Yeah, we need them. I mean, they have to find a way to bring, you know, bring them back and challenge them and say, okay, we're going to have a better tax reforms. So don't um, bring your money or do, uh, to Switzerland or to Liechtenstein, but we need you there because you offer jobs and we can give you something that you want, like win-win game. Um, Maybe like an ocean to put your <laughs> ships on. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but we have to enjoy life. We, ha we can't be slaves of our lives. Like, you know, Sisyphus, either you accept your destiny and, you know, rolling, you know, the, um, the rock up and down, you know, for the, <clears throat> the rest of your life, and there is one theory that this is, you know, also happiness because you have something to do. Yeah. Even if it's a torture, it's you have something uh, to do. It's kind of the syndrome of um, what's the syndrome in Sweden? Uh, um, Seasonal affective disorder. You know, when you know, it's um, like the addiction that we just mentioned yeah. before. When you repeat for the, you know, for the rest of your life, some again and again and again, something that it's even not uh, pleasant, at some point you get used to it and you... The Swedes uh, do this? <laughs> there is a syndrome, so I can't remember that, you know, my memory. Oh, Stockholm Syndrome. Yes, Stockholm Syndrome. That's, that's where, where famously it was uh, created, that terminology, when somebody, when you get kidnapped. Yes, you and get then you get... Hijacked, right, right. and you're, the bad guy is got right you locked in the basement, or, yeah, rapes you, etc. Yeah. And after a while, you start to identify with his position. Yeah, yes. Which is, well, I, but I need you. I need you. Well, I need you too. Yeah. Well, it's... Yeah, yeah. Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, metaphorically. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. another thing, but it's, you know, pretty much, you know, um, you have to, leading your life, you have to lead your dreams. You can't be slave of your dreams. And the Sisyphus, uh, in, in our interpretation, uh, does that. He stood up and said, enough is enough, Zeus. I prefer wow. to be alone. I prefer to suffer. Um, but no, I'm going to rule uh, the game. Even, and I'm going to pay the cost uh, out of it. Uh, well, I want to thank with you. Dignity. With yeah. dignity. With yeah. dignity. When in doubt, be yeah. dignified. Well, I'm good. there's a, a link to your uh, Facebook page on GoHarrison.com right now so everyone can see it and they can click on it and see more about you. Thank you, See Hansen. your photos, yeah, see uh, everything we want to know about uh, Sisyphus that you're able to publish in advance. I know yes. that we need to get a little closer to it to get more information, yes. but we'll get a teaser. Yes. Plus your special Olympics information that's on there, how we can uh, participate, how we can see you run the torch, wherever that might be throughout all of Los Angeles, 50 miles long, <laughs> somewhere in there, you're going to be running it. But we have these things here called cars. <laughs> so we can go check it out. It's pretty modern. Well, I have to mention that. Thank yes, you for giving yes, me this thought. Yes, yes. As you know, car industry is yes. really great in the I mean, in this state. Yes. But what about public transportation? I mean, you, I mean, you know, there are students in this country, in this state. Yes. There are people that they are not extremely rich. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, the, this state is a very rich state. They should do something for the public transportation. I think they build it up a new one, but they should. Do something that you know. I mean, from I mean, you land at the airport, LAX, and then there is no metro there. You have to Correct. go further some kilometers. Yes. I mean, rent a car or yes. you know, yes. a, a yes. taxi. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, yes. you have money, you go for it. But if yes. you, you're a student or no. you you are green, Ooh. you are green, you, and you don't want to use cars, oh. you have to have a nice. No, you're metro. in the wrong town. <laughs> 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 you know, we in the 1920s. This is an interesting uh, tip bit here. In the 1920s, Los Angeles had the best public transportation in the world. Really? We had oh. electrified trolleys from Pasadena all the way down to the ocean. A hundred years ago. Yes. Wow. All the way down to the ocean. You could go from downtown oh. LA in 12 minutes on a trolley for a nickel or whatever it was, all the way down to the ocean, spend the day at the beach, take the trolley all the way back, all the way to Pasadena, which, and, and by the way, we're in Marilyn Monroe's former apartment in West Hollywood right now. So we're in the middle of that. Hello, Marilyn, wherever you are. There we love right you. You did so there. many things. There she is. Thank there. you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. woman. Yeah. Great actress. Big, big titty just 
popping out of the ceiling just to embrace you there. Um, and so we had this great transportation. And in the 1940s, roughly starting there, um, we General Motors, everyone knows General Motors, got together with Firestone, Goodyear, that make the tires. Now imagine in a country currently of 327 million that we have in America, everyone, there's, everyone has a car, some have two. Hmm. Four tires times one car. So we're talking billions of tires. Now over the years, billions and billions and of tires. And car insurances, of course. Eh? Exactly. So to be able to have that many cars, you need to have eight-lane freeways. Public transportation means you and me and everyone else are going to sit on a fucking trolley. <laughs> ding, ding. We get there. Nobody makes money because it's run by the city. Mind the gap, please. It's, yeah, it's non-profit. <laughs> so you have to get rid of them. Yeah. So what you do is the tire company gets together with the car company. You buy out all the trolleys and you replace them with smelly diesel buses in the 1950s, wow. which you know nobody wants to ride on. There's no air conditioning then. So the windows are open. This black exhaust is coming. They're awful. They squeak. They're horrible. Not to mention, a trolley has its own tracks. It stops at the stop. You're on a bus now with all the cars. You stop every two minutes. You go nowhere. Hmm. People, so what do they do? General Motors at the same time rolls out this thing called the personal automobile, which has uh, four cars or four doors. And you put these things called children in the back. They get the back seats. And then it has a big trunk where you put your luggage or your groceries. And the world's first suburb is invented in, in Los Angeles, in Studio City. A suburb where houses were built with a carport to park that car. And the only way you can get there is by car, no public transportation. And so the rest of the country built itself around suburbia. People fled the cities and wanted to own their own little house. It's the American dream for sure. But for a city, the second largest city in the United States, to have the worst public transportation outside of maybe Mumbai, they, they may have better transportation. <laughs> Probably do. Yeah. And it makes no sense in a state that is the world's seventh largest economy. Right, yeah. I mean, Extraordinary. Yes. We should have Swiss quality trains here. With, with a Japanese, uh, with a Japanese uh, uh, yes, flavor. Flavor. Where you have, like in Switzerland, a guy pushing a food trolley with a white linen cloth over his arm on the second deck of the train. And we just don't have any. Um, but we build subways in on the San Andreas Fault here because we're clever that way, <laughs> you know, underground. So we'll see. But it's a start. Well, San Francisco has a, has a really good public transportation. But yeah, you know why? I mean, you, you know, you know why they never let it go? It's because the population is is concentrated in a certain area. Because L.A. is so spread, spread out, out. Yeah, right. you could get rid of the trolley and take a car and go somewhere and it's flat and you could park. You could park. Now you can't park. <laughs> now it's suddenly interesting. And, and you know, you see bicycles now yeah. and dead people too. But, you know, it's, it's, it's starting. I myself have a scooter, a small well, motorcycle. Because there are not many. I mean, I no, noticed that. Very I mean, few. Yeah, I mean, it's even in New York that is a city that it, it will, I mean, if New York was in Europe, in, in Greece, in London, yeah. in Paris, in Spain, everybody has a scooter sure. or, you know, um, a, a motorbike so yes. you can um, uh, escape all this huge traffic that yes. we have, yes. of course, yes. unfortunately in Europe too. But I was thinking why they don't have the scooters or that many scooters in New York or here in, in California. The weather is great. I mean, okay, Harley Davidson, boom, 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 yeah, boom, yeah. great, but not like, you know, smaller ones. Um, maybe you're the only one here in West Hollywood. I'm, I'm one of like Very few, ten. ten, yeah. But I think... People are scared. You assume you're going to be killed. Well, yeah, because they drive very aggressive. Yeah, yeah. They, the drivers here. Yeah, yeah well, that makes sense. But they, you, you assume it's true because you don't know. And I think if we all pretended we were Vietnam <laughs> and just everyone got on a scooter and blew the cars out, it'd be great. <laughs> it'd be great because here's the secret with the scooter. I'm going to tell you the big secret. One of the reasons I have it is it cost me four dollars and eighty cents a week in gas. You have to repeat that to your audience. It cost four dollars yeah. and eighty cents a week in gas. Now today, only. only I drove. If you're not from LA, this reference won't make a lot of sense. But I drove from West Hollywood to Pasadena today, which is twelve miles, and I burnt a 
almost a quarter of a tank of gas because it took over an hour. And it, I mean, I may as well have yeah. driven to fucking Nevada. You know, <laughs> I mean, really, it's the same thing. It's crazy. So on the scooter, um, $4.80 a week in gas, and the city hasn't figured out what it is. It doesn't know if it's a bicycle. It's not a car. It's not really a motorcycle, though it's 150 cc's. Technically, I can go about 50 probably. What color? It's black. Ah, it's yes. It's black. It's yeah. super fierce. Right, right. So I can park it as if it's a bicycle because it's not of this. It's not of that. And everyone gets traffic tickets in L.A. I mean, you can count on it twice a month. You're going to get a $130 parking <laughs> ticket. I never get one. I back it in right on the the – where the the white spaces are marked to fit a car, a parking space, you just back the scooter exactly perpendicular along the line that separates the cars, and it just disappears. It's pure Disney magic. Yeah, I like I like a lot. Uh, I mean Vespers. Yeah, yeah right? it's, it's it's really really nice. Oh, the, I mean the Italians are lazy people. They just in, you know have Vespers and you know. What do you mean by this? <laughs> yes, it is true. <laughs> Work, work, <laughs> back to work. <laughs> well, we love them, and I, you know, we we have to. As I told you before, I'm very, I mean, proud of European values, but they have to understand that uh, you know the the fas the fascism and the neo fascism. fascism and the neo Nazism is is rising up dramatically, and because of the crisis, so they have to. To do something, you know, right away today, yesterday, because uh, it's 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 scary. It's really <clears throat> it's really scary. Marie Le Pen, I mean, in France, yeah, in France, yeah, not in uh, in uh, in South Sudan or in Afghanistan. In France, in Greece, the third largest party, it's neo Nazi party. So uh, they must do all these European leaders that they take great salaries every every single month. Uh, well, they have to find a solution, a diplomatic well, solution. And just for perspective, here in West Hollywood, which is one mile by – it's a, it's about one mile by 1.8 miles. It's tiny. It's a tiny little town. It's a mile. Well, yes. That's the size of Key West, if you know that in Florida. At the very bottom of the state of Florida, there's a little island called Key West. This is West Hollywood. It's tiny. Yeah, it's nothing. Very tiny. It's 35,000 people. A deputy to a city council person. City council person is just a city council person. The deputy gets paid the same salary as the prime minister or the chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel. The deputy gets the same salary as Vladimir Putin of Russia. Really? The deputy gets the same salary as the prime minister of Israel, Netanyahu. And, Just, and those people that you mentioned yes. have a lot of responsibilities. Yes. yes. Oh mean, my God. Okay, we love them, we hate them, whatever, but you know, we have to be objective. Yeah. That uh, if either you don't like, you like her or you don't like her, him, the prime minister of Germany, whatever, or Israel, they are, they, they're prime ministers. I mean, they have many responsibilities. So they do deserve to, to take some good salaries. I mean, no the, scandals. But, and, the uh, but the deputy is... One well, moment. That, yes. Well, May, I can, would you like it to send, leave a voicemail? Well, one moment. That's the one, uh, you know, yes. duty. And one moment. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put on my voicemail because I'm going to go to lunch. <laughs> It's incredible. But they have elections, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. This, yes. This week is coming up. Yes. It's coming up. Well, we'll see. Huh? We'll see which deputy is in and which it, one is, is out. Is he still working there? Is he still there? He's on so. that one is on leave, but he's he got paid one hundred and thirty thousand. Oh my god! We're, we're just well, to, to bring you up to speed, we're talking about one city councilman uh, whose name is John Duran, who used a, uh, a gay sex app called Grinder, which I happen to think is a good one, by the way. Just if we're going to rate them, it's up there. Um, but it's kind of a cynical app because it's it's built by its builder from West Hollywood. So it's built in his version of how gay men ought to talk to each other, which is um, hors d'oeuvre and dessert bypass the dinner. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> yeah, but that but that's that's him. Yes, but it 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 forces because I interviewed him. It forces in 130 different nations where this grinder app is used. It forces gay guys all over the world to have to conform to one guy's way of doing it. 
And this guy apparently wasn't able to get dates very comfortably. It wasn't able to do a lot comfortably. So he created an app that got him laid immediately without having to talk, without having to have a conversation, without having to get to, to look stupid or boring or anything. And, you know, it's basically one one millisecond of your best moment. That's your profile shot. <laughs> one one millisecond of your best moment. It's like a billboard. And that's all somebody sees. And then, you know, you, you get them like, I'm ready now, baby. I want it now. <laughs> so this council It's one of the most successful applications. Uh, very I mean, much. I think there was a very interesting article on New York Times about yes. the guy that, you know, the, the founder of the yes. uh, uh, Grinder. Yes. Well, yes. Why not? <laughs> well, why not? It's just interesting yeah. to watch other cultures bend so, to that. So they met through this applica- I mean, application. Yes. So the, the, he offered him a job? The, the city councilman, well, the, here's the, the, the city councilman meets his deputy, the one that got 130000 Um They did all manner of wonderful things, whatever they did after meeting. And then um, magically, magically, his trick or, or friend from Grinder, his former sex friend, um, ends up as his personal deputy. I'm sure there's no connection, even though they only knew each other through that one way, and gives him $130,000 of taxpayers' money. So it makes more than the Prime Minister of Israel yes. or Prime Minister now, of Now, that's kind of like that's... prostitution, if you ask me. Well, I don't. Do you know, Kerry? I'm not judging you, prostitutes or you know, go-go girls no, or go-go boys. No, no. I mean, they do we're just, something. We're just, you know, they offer something. We're, we're not talking, beautiful, and you know, they, that's their, yeah. their job. And yeah. thank you that they yeah. exist. And, yeah, you know, great. Well, then I want yeah. some too. If I'm yeah. paying for it, and this, if, you know. this, if this is a, yeah. if this is prostitution yeah. and it's something beautiful, and I'm paying 130 grand, I want my ten dollars of it. Well, I mean, it's, it's your, only fair. Uh, that it's comes mine. Your taxation, you I mean, it yeah, does. Your taxes. So yes, yeah. it does. Uh, yes. and that's the problem. That's the problem. Here. Yeah, but that's the that, problem. If it was out of his pocket, then he—that's his business. Good he can for do, him. Good for him. But we're not but talking about that. But when you pay well, and you don't point. take anything, that's the point. <laughs> we're talking about corruption here. Yeah. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem of lack of transparency. It's a problem of the public trust. And when you're giving salaries that are greater than the prime minister of Israel or, or Germany, the most powerful nation in, in yeah. Europe, you know, you have to go, and what does this guy do? Well, he answers the phone. <laughs> does he do it well? Well enough. It's like, but he takes breaks once in a while. He does. His coffee. And he's yeah. in a union of, with five other deputies. <laughs> they have their own union. So, they, so have, you, they fire themselves if they need to. I'm going to fire you. Oh, no, you're not. We're making too much money. <laughs> oh, that's well, c'est la vie. Well, this corruption is uh, carried all over the world. I know. In states, in Greece, in Italy, uh, in Germany, uh, in, in Austria. I mean, it's, it's all over. Norway? Um, <laughs> l- there, too, less, I guess. Sweden or Canada, yeah, less because you know it's when you when you have this big corruption, and then you have to be punished. Uh, I mean, especially when you're in a political position. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, in general, in general, but mostly when you're in a political uh, position, you're you're a minister or whatever deputy. That's it's it's you represent your your nation. You represent your uh, your your public, your people. Really? Um, well, is that what they're doing? Well, I don't know <laughs> why, how they what they feel or how they do that. They do it, but this is at least my approach. I mean, if you want to be in a public position, yeah. then you have to um, to you know face the public and say, well, I have done maybe in the past some mistakes. I apologize for that because I'm a human being. But now, being in a, be a be honest, and then you don't have to say, well, I did not had sex with Monica Lewinsky, yes. but you can say I did it. I had a really great time. <laughs> yeah. And I know you're jealous. Yeah. I know, that's really I know the they're problem. jealous. That's really well, the problem. Maybe I shouldn't, but the power of the flesh, it was in uh, that moment different. And who doesn't so- want a 17 year old girl? Anyone in the room doesn't want a 17 year old girl. <laughs> well, no, pedophile. It's, you know, it's, 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 no, that's, that's disgusting, huh? Uh, but, but, uh, you have to, to be honest, even if you did something that was very, very wrong. You have to stand up and say, yes, I did it. I apologize, deeply apologize. 
um, I had a good time, you had a good time, yeah? or if it was something really wrong, you, you have to say, okay, I'm a human being, I did this mistake. But once that you have a public position, then it's not you anymore. It's, it's not you anymore. And there's a powerful play by Jean Genet, you know, uh, the, uh, the Balcony, and, you know, it's about this, you know, politics, and it's really interesting, yeah. So, anyway, good luck to him. Yeah. <laughs> you might be the next uh, mayor of the municipality. We'll find out. Uh, yeah, because you might be that good looking that people, girls and boys, want to <laughs> see him as the next mayor of the city. Well, he, he has been mayor many times. Ah, uh, really? Yes. Uh, okay, well, I don't know. I think he has a sphere of influence in his checkbook. Oh, all or right. our checkbook, anyway. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Why, well, let me take you to lunch. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. I really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. Thank you for having me, We Carrie. just I flew really all over to... the place. Yes. It was, it was um, nice and silly, just the way I like it. Well, it must Mostly. be like this. This is life. It yes, must right? be like this. Right? Serious and crazy and silly. And we're, we have to. We are ch still children. We must be. We are adults, but we have to keep these... Uh, Innocent and craziness, like, you know, the little children. That's Playful good. spirit. Yes. Right. Yeah. Until the very last of our <laughs> moments of life. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for being thank you. Thank such you. a... Thank uh, you. That's Greek to you, I know. It is. Well, it's, yeah, that's all Greek to me. Ευχαριστώ Try. Say it again. Ευχαristo. Ευχaristo. Not bad. Ευχaristo. Poli. Poli, the people, something of the people. Uh, poli means um, a lot. Thank a you. Lot. Thank you very much. Ah. Well, pop, uh, pol popular uh -huh. or uh, public uh -huh. comes from the word politis, uh -huh. like police. Yeah. Another Greek word. Police comes from the word polis. You know, Acropolis. Polis means the city. Polis. Yeah. Um, polis. Acropolis. Cosmopolitan. Um, police, uh -huh. police, the people that protect, you know, the, the citizens, the, yeah. the, the city. So police. Is that what they do? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, uh, not always. <laughs> you know, if you have a different color of your skin, well, yeah. sometimes. They're protecting yes, somebody in the city anyway. Well, yes, yeah. But at the same time, you know, they do a lot for us. We yeah. have to, you know, it's nice to make jokes. Yeah. We have to say the, you know, both sides of the, of the coin. They yeah. do their best. It's a very risky position and work. But they have to rethink again when is you have a different color of your skin, you know, and you're a young guy without keeping a gun on your hands yes. or any knife. You know, you have to rethink if you have to shoot him 18 times or maybe another way you can shoot him on his knees or on his um, I don't know, elbow. So he can be on his knees painfully, but not dead. Well, that'll be interesting if they start doing that instead of shooting him dead. <laughs> What about yeah. the word pubic? Is that Greek? Pubic? Yeah, pubic. Mm, I'm not sure, to like be honest. Like public without the L. Well, the public comes from, it's, it's Greek that, yeah. you know, then the Latins use it. It was yeah. like, you know, you know, back and forward, yeah. uh, exchanging culturally yes. <laughs> uh, mm, words. Uh, well, public, yes, it comes from, you know, popular, politis, right. yeah, it comes from right, republican, public, it comes from polis, pol yeah, I mean, acropolis, like, you know. Yes, the high of, city. Yes, the, high, the highest part of the city, uh -huh. because acropolis is the highest part of the city, yeah. Man, many beautiful words, I mean, democracy, philosophy, yeah. poetry, theater, theatro. Uh, mathematics. I mean, I was studying medicine, um, and many, many words in in, in medicine. Um, yeah. What, and tragedy isn't that tragos tra goat song? Tra e tragodia. Yeah. Yeah. Greek tragedy. We live in Greek now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> nowadays, <laughs> no Greek drama, <laughs> Greek tragedy. Yeah, but another beautiful Greek word yes. after the Greek tragedy. That's the great minds have been, and our great father is Euripides. Uh, uh, who wrote Medea and Orestes and, and, and Aeschylus, all these great, great minds. You know, after this tragedy, tragedy uh -huh. is the catharsis. Yes. And I'm sure that your audience, uh, they, they know what is catharsis, huh? Yeah, that's the release. Yes, yeah. Like in a massage, <laughs> release. Yes, yeah, something like that. Yes. Well, um, even with uh, happy end, without happy end. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a catharsis. Yes. Uh, so we uh, we are on that uh, direction. I mean, in every tragic cycle, there is a catharsis. So it's and this is the hope. That's the hope. So it's going to turn out okay. Everything. Well, I'm optimistic by nature. So the Pandora box with all these, you know, b- yes. bad things. Yes. The very last thing was, you know, this little bird, which symbolizes uh, hope. So that's 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 what it is. Yeah, not in Sisyphus. <laughs> not in Sisyphus. There is no hope. There's only, you know, one day or the other way. But still, you yeah, know, we 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 hope. We have to be optimistic, and we have to stand up and fight for our rights and for our future because. It's not about us. It's about the new generation that is coming up, even though that we're still babies. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the new generation yeah. that is coming up, we have to stand up for them because, you know, our parents and our grandparents stood up um, against Germans. <laughs> yes, they do. All of ours. Yes. Mine too. You know, I mean, all the world. Huh? <laughs> to, you know, to s- save us from this crazy Hitler. Yeah, yeah. Well, what a great way to end this conversation. <laughs> yes. That there's hope and the little birds fighting the Germans. I think it's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. From the Pandora box. From the yeah. Pandora box. Yes. Well, thank you so much, my thank friend. Thank you, Kerry. I really enjoyed it. Go Harrison.com.